Hello everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing and today I want to talk to you about a few rigs that I use during the flounder season or really throughout the fishing season when I am trying to target flounder. One of the rigs that I use is the Get Her Done rig. Now this rig is very effective. I really enjoy throwing this rig. This is be easily became has become one of my go-to rigs when I am fishing for flounder. At the end of this video, I'm going to have some clips from when Captain Cody and myself originally made the video showing you guys the tech, the get her done rig and showing you guys how it fish and looks underwater. I will have the clip from that video at the end of this video. So if you're not familiar with it, stay tuned and check it out. It is a, like I said, it is a great, great super rig and I'll get into more of that in a minute. But first of all, I want to talk to you about a tandem rig. I know there's a lot of different variations of tandem rigs. A lot of people throw them. If you're not familiar with them and you're not used to throwing them, I suggest you do so. Not just for flounder, but for reds and trout. I mean, whenever you are fishing with tandem rigs, it looks like a school of bait. A school of bait fish is swimming through the area. You double the opportunity to get a strike when you really put this in a fish strike zone. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. It's really simple how I tie them. You know, if you know me, you know I like to dumb it down. I like to keep it simple. I'm not too technical in a lot of things. And tying this rig is no different. All right, so what you're basically going to need is you're going to need two different size jig heads. A heavier jig head and a lighter jig head. Now the heavier jig is going to be on bottom and the lighter jig is going to be on top. You can also replace the lighter jig head with a J hook, but I like to use jig heads. And you'll need either a chatterweight or a swivel. Now the chatterweights I have found to be a little more effective because they do offer that little sound, that little chatter, but we know that when you're fishing around a lot of the structure when you're fishing for flounder you can get snagged and caught up a lot and unfortunately you can lose a lot of these chatter weights and, and they tend to run a little they tend to be a little expensive they're a lot more expensive than using a swivel and I believe this is a number five swivel but I'm not I'm not too sure with that and I like to use fluorocarbon line I'm using mono right now just for the video purpose but I'll tend to use 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon line and what you want to do is simply get about four feet of this line off and then you place it in your hand you place it in your hand and what you're going to do is you're going to wrap around your hand three times and that's going to leave you maybe about a foot I want about a foot of line so I'm going to do that again so I can leave myself about a foot of line yeah, about a foot of line and this is more, this is so, like I said, this, is, this isn't very scientific. It doesn't have to be exact measurements. You know, I, I'll make these tandem lines all the time, and they rarely, rarely do I make tie two, and they look the same or the exact same length. All right, so I have the three lines in my hand. And what you simply want to do is you want to take one of the lines, and you want to wrap it around the other two lines three times so get that out the way we got one two three and then you take that line that you just wrapped and you're gonna pull it away from the other lines and cinch down on what you just did using I'll use my mouth real fast and it's going to leave you something like that and you could wet the or not a little bit and it's going to help cinch it down just a little more and it's going to leave you that line for your lighter J hook and it's going to leave you the line for your heavier J hook and leave you the line that's going to go to your swivel or your chatter weight so I'm just going to take this in right here and cut that off
and that's gonna leave me with that all right so now I'm gonna connect my swivel to the shorter end and what I'm simply gonna do is a simple loop knot go around one time bring it down a little bit and I'm gonna attach it to my chatter weight then I'm gonna come back through on the opposite side of this loop and it's gonna give me that right there I'm gonna wrap around three times I'm gonna take stick my tag in back through the middle of the loop and cinch that down Now, like I said, typically you could wet this, and that's gonna leave you with the with the loop knot like that, and then you just simply cut your tag. And the reason why I like the loop knot is because it lets everything kind of free flow. I mean, I could tie a clinch knot or a uni to uni, or a clinch knot or a uni knot, but it kind of lets everything kind of free flow. So this middle knot, this middle line right here. It's for my lighter jig head. I'm gonna pinch this together. And like I said, there's different, all different kind of knots you can uh, tie this, attach how to attach your jig heads, but I'm gonna go with the simplest knot because a lot of times you are in the water, you are weight fishing, you are in a hurry, you're just trying to get back out there and cast again. And after you pinch that through, you just simply slide the hook through the loop bring that back around and just cinch that down and now you're left with your bottom part of your tandem and then this is when the trimming comes in if you need to trim a little more you could trim just a little bit or you can just do it while you're tying the knot right here is kind of where I want it to go so I'm gonna make another loop knot. Tie my loop there, like that. Bring my heavier jig head through. Then I'm going to bring my line back through the loop. And then I'm going to start wrapping around three times. And then I'm going to go back through the loop again. And you can singe this down again, either with spit or water. If you're on the water, you can have water all around you, like a lot of times we're out there weight fishing. So you singe it down. And what that does is that, give, again, that gives you your lure the freedom your jig head the freedom to move and then you have this little tag in but yeah that is that is pretty simple you know i like to keep it simple i like to keep things watered down as much as possible keep it basic you know that is the tandem rig you have the heavier jig head on bottom you have the lighter jig head on top next in line you have the chatter weight or you have a swivel Gives you an extra place to hold the fish and manage the fish whenever you are landing them. So the swivel and the chatter weight really help out a lot. And I know a lot of times these chatter weights might be hard for some people to find. So that a great alternative is to use a swivel. Now I'll talk to you a minute before about what is my favorite rig to fish with when I am targeting flounder. And that is the Gitter Nun rig. Now myself and Captain Cody Nunn re-recorded this footage about a year ago introducing the Getter Dunn rig to a lot of people and I have got a lot of great feedback from people all from viewers all along the East Coast, they're down to Florida, all along the Gulf and locally here that say that they love the rig, that they've caught some of their first flounder on them, that they caught fluke on them and you know this rig just really pro has proven itself and really taken a life of its own and really proven itself to be highly highly effective when you are fishing for some of those bottom fish 
I hope you found this information useful, and if you haven't tried a tandem rig, I hope you do so. And if you haven't tried the Get Her Done rig, this this would be a great time. This is the great time of the year to really do that. And, well, I'm going to leave you with the footage from last year of us, you know, trying and tying and showing you how the Get Her Done rig works and how to tie it. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. So everybody has their own deal. But, yeah, this is the Get Her Done rig. So, uh are, are you ready for it? Yeah, ready. Okay. All right, so uh, I, I usually use about a two and a half, three foot leader to start off with, and then I'll trim it to however I need it. So I'll go up I'll about a foot or so like this, and I'll do a, a double overhand knot. I'll go slow. So a double overhand is you make a loop, you go inside the loop, you do it twice. If you do it once, it's not as strong, it breaks easier to me. So then you just tighten her up. I got it right there. And uh, take my hook, if it go through this big line, yeah, so there. And then I'll do a, poly, a Panamar knot, which is another loop knot, kind of. So you go through, you make a loop, you go through the middle of that loop, you pull it, then the hook goes through that loop, center down, like that. So that's that part of it. And then, I try to get it about seven or eight inches off the bottom. So I'll, I want my weight to be about right here. Then you can see how pretty that hook stands out there for when you're jigging. So we'll go to about right there. I do just a, a goofy, you know, three overhand knots on that so it'll break off easy. That way you don't lose your whole rig if you get hung up. And this doesn't snag as bad as what, if you're using a, uh, you know, the double rig that everybody uses that didn't have a hook on it so it goes over your oyster reefs and your pieces of wood and rock and stuff this goes over all that stuff a lot easier if you use a double rig it gets hung up on everything and then you lose your whole rig and you're starting all over and that's the reason why I started using this is I didn't get that many bites on the bottom and I think if you pull this over a founder's head he's gonna come up off the bottom he's gonna get it and he's, he don't grab it by the tail like a lot of people think he grabs the whole thing and then he goes and sets back up on the bottom. And, uh, but that's it right there. I'll put a swivel up here. You know, I'll tie my, tie my, uh, my main leader to that right there. And, uh, and I'm just jerk, 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 jerk. You know, I'm, I'm just barely bouncing my rod tip. And this bait is just going up and down, up and down on the bottom like that. I'm just barely moving it. Cast it. Cast it out. I even switch hands. It looks goofy, but I just... And he's spinning to get the slack out of the line, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just move it a couple inches. Just jig, jig. Sometimes I'll move it a little faster. Some days they like it faster. I mean, for some days I'll I'll move it that quick. But guess what? At that one ounce weight, it stays on the bottom. If you're using, you know, a half ounce, quarter ounce jigs, you're every time you jerk, jerk it, it's working its way up in the water column. Then, you know, some days they like it slower, but I, I fish fast most of the time, though. And you can just kind of, that's about as slow as I'll fast fish right there. I don't fish any slower than that. A lot of people just drag it. I don't ever drag it. I'm always, I'm always popping my rod tip. And my forearms are done at the end of the day, usually. Yeah.